This is a little before and after video today. We're going to be looking at the Bushmaster M17S. This is the before. I bought these two rifles in the early 90s. And really what we're concentrating on today is reviewing the K&M Aerospace modifications. This is the after. Hey guys, this is Mike, MBell556, and we're looking at the Bushmaster M17S today. Specifically, we're going to be looking at some modifications to this gun. Back in the early 90s, I bought two of these M17S bullpups from Bushmaster. They've been sitting in the vault. I'd look at them. I thought it was a pretty neat design. It's a piston-driven system. They weigh about 8 pounds, a little bit more than 8 pounds. But every time I would pick this gun up and think about taking it out to the range to shoot, it felt a little awkward. Um, the sights were, were just too high. The cheek weld didn't seem comfortable at all. And I would end up just sitting it back up on the vault wall and picking another gun to take out to the range. And then I started looking on the internet. So I started investigating the options that k &M Aerospace offered for their modifications to the Bushmaster M17S. This is a series of options that I opted for on my Bushmaster. First, I had them shorten the barrel. The original barrel here. This has a barrel sleeve. And they shortened the barrel as short as they could to eliminate the barrel sleeve altogether. The barrel still considerably longer than 16 inches. And the gun has an overall length now of 26 and a half inches. So that makes the gun as short as it can be without having to register it as a short barrel rifle. So it feels very handy now. A bullpup in general is a very handy feeling rifle anyway. But now with a shorter barrel, it really feels easy to swing and easy to handle. And I like that option. That was about $125 as I recall. Now, other options, most of the packages that they have include a series of holes and slots in the receiver. You can pick whatever pattern you want and they will cut them the way you want. The package deals that include the holes in the receivers, also a bottom rail down here, they'll remove the little tabs and place a rail on the bottom. And so they did that in my gun here. Also, I had them do small vent holes beside the bottom rail to improve the, the ventilation of the gun since this gun does have a reputation for having the hand guards really get hot during rapid firing. The other modifications included removing this carry handle. The rail on this gun is just way too high. And they have their own rail that they put on. They remove the carry handle and put this much lower profile rail that still does not interfere with the ventilation holes that were originally on the gun. Another thing they did is get rid of this charging handle, which is basically the back part of this carry handle. And they replace that. You can have ambidextrous handles. Um, I opted for just the charging handle on the left side here. Another thing, um, when all is said and done, very interesting, I don't know if you've noticed, but this rifle is actually balancing on the tabletop on its pistol grip. And so it's very well balanced with these changes. It's not a lot lighter. It's several ounces lighter than the original gun. But they've taken off the plastic carry handle and added a metal rail and then added a rail on the bottom. They did shorten the barrel, but all in all, it ends up being just a few ounces lighter, but it's just much more balanced. So now let's just break this gun down and show you how simple the design really is. The original Bushmasters have a polymer lower with three takedown pins. The two takedown pins in the back are captive and the one in the front is non-captive. 
The new K&M lowers, which are machined billet aluminum, only have two captive takedown pins. So we're going to press out the takedown pins. This is the non-captive front pin. The two pins in the back are both captive. The lower receiver is very light polymer. This is the registered part of the weapon. The upper receiver, which has now been modified, barrel shortened. The rail on the bottom, these are the little vent holes beside the rail that I was referring to earlier. They were cut on both sides. The lug for the previous sling attachment was removed and then this low profile rail placed on the bottom, then the rail placed on the top. The bolt group comes out of the back and is all self-contained. The recoil springs, recoil rods, buffer, and bolt carrier are all in a self-contained unit. And basically at this point, the gun is filled stripped. The piston system inside, a short stroke piston system, the barrel comes all the way to the back. Now the barrel is about 18 and a half inches long. To reassemble the gun, you simply take the bolt carrier group, line it up inside, and drop it back in. Align the take up holes. Put the non captive pin in. Swing it down, press the captive pins in, and we're ready to go. This is the new ETS translucent polymer magazine. We'll be testing this in the Bushmaster M17S full puck. These are the coupled ETS magazines. Fits very nicely in this bullpup design. They're designed for AR-15 rifles. So we have 60 rounds. Let's see how it does. the bolt open. We have 30 more rounds now. That's 60 rounds. The hand guards on this gun are a little warm. After 90 rounds of rapid fire, not uncomfortable at all without gloves. Very big improvement. 
So in the final analysis, these modifications cost an even $600, including shipping. What does that compare to? Well, if you buy one of their new guns, which includes the machined aluminum lower, they're about $1,800. They do have a very nice trigger in them. They have other modifications, including the side charging handle, the original Bushmasters, are available in the secondary market if you shop around for somewhere between seven and eight hundred dollars. So I certainly wouldn't recommend running out and buying a Bushmaster and then sending it to Ken McAllister and having him do the modifications. If you look at that, you're looking at maybe twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. In that situation, you might want to just consider getting a brand new gun with the new design modifications that they've performed at k and Aerospace. But if you own one of these from the 1990s and you found it kind of awkward to shoot or you found that it's really too uncomfortable when it gets overheated or you don't like the height of the rails on the top or you really don't like the concept that you might be able to pinch your finger when you charge this, then I'd recommend at least looking into the K&M modifications. I can tell you that this is a lot more comfortable gun to shoot now and this will be making several trips to the range now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful and entertaining. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.